What's up y'all, it's Timmy, and today we're going to remove the truck house from the truck, so uh, let's go do it. It's nice and early in the morning and I'm in my little cabin right now. We're gonna go outside and remove the truck house from the truck. So let's go do it. This is a special removal of the truck house because this is the first time I have tried my electric camper jacks and the uh, zero declination quick release system. So it's gonna be sweet. So let's get you guys set up and get started. I'm gonna need this here tripod. All right, here we go. So what makes this system awesome is, oh my God. These are the Rico Titan electric camper jacks and the zero declination extension plate and the zero declination quick release hook, which is the sweet part. Check this out. You literally walk up to the camper, insert and lift. And you put a pin through right here, and there it is. Then I'm going to take the electrical plug of the camper jack here and plug it into the electrical receptacle that I wired up. And there we go. This jack is now powered and locked in. Kind of looks scary, but I don't think it's going anywhere. It's definitely more solid than my other setup. So let's get all four sides in, and then we're going to release the turnbuckles and lift this thing up. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the turnbuckles right here. I have some quick release turnbuckles coming in next week where I just come up and pull a lever and they automatically come off. So this is the last time I'm gonna have to do this. All four electric camper jacks have been hooked up. They've been plugged in. Let's turn it on, raise it up. So this is the Rico Titan jack switch that I mounted up. So I press that. You can see that the power is on now. So let's see what happens. So this is the Rico Titan wireless remote for all four electric camper jacks. As you can see, I can lift and lower each individual side or I can do them all together. So right now I'm going to bring them all down together and get them fairly close to the ground. And then I'll individually touch each one of them to the ground and I'll lift everything up together after that. So let's see if it works. And it looks backwards. So this doesn't bring the jacks down. It's like the opposite of what you think. So I'm trying to lift the camper. So that means the jacks will go down. Here we go, moment of truth. Looking pretty good. Let's make sure it's working on the other side. Beautiful. That is so cool. So all four jacks are going down right now. That is so sweet. So I'm a little bit nervous on how these brackets are going to hold up. There are 16 lag screws going into my corners, so we'll see. And what you can do to eyeball all four jacks is just get down low and you can kind of see what's going on. And you can see that passenger front is way higher than the others. So these back guys are going to hit first. So I'm about to stop them. Stop right there. Now we're going to do that back corner and get that all the way down. So that is the right rear. That one's touching. Let's get this front one here. That one's touching and get the other one. That's it. So we are touching on all four sides. And as you can see, these jacks have 36 inches of lift. So I'm sitting at about 26 inches in the rear. So I can go up 10 inches. So I can lift the back of this camper 10 inches off the bed, which is awesome. 
front jacks a little bit closer these are sitting at 28 inches so i still have a full eight inches of lift to work with so i should totally be able to get this camper up and off so when you're lifting a camper you do not want the front or the rear to get too low because then the whole camper can fall that way and the same with any individual side you want to make sure to bring them up pretty evenly within two inches of each other the whole time so i'm going to lift all four of the jacks together and then i'm going to just be eyeballing it from there on out and bringing up the front or rear or left or right as needed so here we go moment of truth and you'll notice the suspension is going to get unloaded on the truck We're already two inches off the ground, so I need to bring the rear up just a little bit. So let's look at the sway. So I'm gonna lift the left side of the camper up just to get it evened out a little bit here. You can see how that left side's lower just slightly. So we're gonna go to the left rear and lift it just a little. And right rear. Left rear. Lift them together. That is so easy. <laughs> Oh my God. I cannot begin to express how much easier this system is. This is so freaking cool. Pretty freaking bomber too. Like it feels good. Nothing looks sketchy. Yeah, everything looks super solid. This is dope. As you can see, I'm already off, but I'm gonna bring the whole thing up. Step back and eyeball it just a little bit. It looks fairly level, so let's bring it all up together. There you go. Check that out. <laughs> yeah, boy. You drive right out from under it. Success. So now let's try to drive the truck out from under it. I'm gonna lift it up just a little bit more. And as you can see, I still have six inches of clearance to lift up. So let's go up a little bit more. Now my favorite part, let's drive out from under the truck house. nice all right give you guys a quick walk around and i cannot tell you how stoked i am right now how easy that was how well that worked as you guys can see here these are the zero declination extension plates four inch extension plates and the quick release mount which basically gives this jack post clearance to not hit my truck if i wasn't using the extension plate here these jack posts would be right here and then it would hit my flatbed. So that's why those are on. And you only have to put them in the front, not the rears back there. It looks sketchy, but it's actually really solid. That's super solid. Like my camper is not shaking at all when I try to move it. So I'm incredibly stoked. That worked awesome. Very cool. So the whole reason I removed the camper is once a year in the middle of the summer like this, I do the captain's varnish in the outside of it. So I'm basically going to paint the whole thing with captain's varnish, which is going to waterproof the entire camper and uh, just keep it nice and dry for another year here. Now what I'm going to do is lower the whole camper as a unit. That way it'll be sitting in the sawhorses and stabilize it because I have to stand on the porch to paint it. So let's get the whole thing down. So now we're going to hit that lower button right there, lower all four sides. Like when you get this dialed with those fast turnbuckles, I can have this camper off in five minutes, maybe less. Then as you guys can see, I've lowered it onto the sawhorses. There's still a little bit of pressure on all four jacks just to stabilize it, but that takes all the load off. So now we can start getting to the captain's varnish. Tell you what's funny is seeing the truck without the camper in the back. So you can see that custom flatbed right there. I pretty much just sketched out the design for Joe up at Midnight Sun Metal Works. And he fabbed it up for me there. Did an awesome job. I can weld, but uh, not aluminum. Okay, so here is what we're using to waterproof the truck today. So it's the same stuff you put on a wooden sailboat. It's captain's varnish. I've got a brand new gallon can of it right here. 
really expensive. This is like $130 for one gallon. And essentially what this stuff does is gel coat the outside of the camper and just makes it waterproof. So I've got one gallon to do the whole camper basically. You wanna buy a really high quality brush, good bristles to put it on there nice and smooth. And then you just need a little plastic tray to get the excess varnish off the brush. Oh, those are tight. Anyhow, you guys get the point. So you can see it just leaves this nice gel coating glaze varnish on there and this will dry rock hard. It makes it super waterproof. So we're gonna continue around the camper and I'll catch you guys back up in a little bit here. All right, front side of the camper's done. Now we're gonna move around to the side right here. So you might be able to tell a difference on camera. I don't know if you can see it, but you can definitely see the gloss coating in the front versus the side right there. Unfortunately, the grain of the wood is running long ways, so it makes it a little bit trickier. I kind of have to get the varnish down into the grains of the wood by going side to side instead of up and down. But then in the end, I'll just pull it nice and smooth like that. And really, you don't have to do this every single year. I just choose to just to keep this camper nice and upkept and uh, just keep it waterproof. Don't want any problems with it down the road. Usually, like the number one thing that kills campers is water damage. So the whole reason I'm out here doing this. All right, now we get the passenger side of the camper varnished. So we're gonna continue moving around. I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. Guess what everybody, we're done. So the entire camper has been varnished. Good to go. Probably took me about three and a half to four hours I'd say, but everything is super coated, nice and glossy. It's gonna take about 12 hours to dry and then we'll put it back in the truck and we'll be good to go. All right, my next project is I'm going to remove my wind directional chimney cap. It's been custom made. No matter how many times I grease those bearings, the heat from the wood stove heats all the grease out, even high temperature grease melts out. And every time the thing spins, it makes all kinds of horrible noises and it's hard to sleep sometimes. Since I'm going to be on this road trip, mainly in the fall, I won't need my wood stove until I get back to Alaska. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this rotating chimney cap and just put a solid one on. That way it's not spinning around making noise. Right now, it's not making, uh, for some reason, not making too many noises, but up. Oh. Yeah, weird, it's being quiet. Anyhow, I'm taking that off. Not only that, this other chimney cap is significantly shorter than this, so this will save me clearance when I'm um, off-roading through the trees and stuff like that. A little less style than my other one, but. You can tell it's actually below the roof line. Now you can tell that that chimney cap is just below the roof line before it was like half a foot to a foot above it. So not too bad. All right, we are inside the camper. We look at the smooth footage. I love this gimbal. And this is my Kimberly wood stove right here. So obviously I'm not gonna be using this in the summertime. So I'm gonna take this out and put that portable air conditioner in its place. And the sweetest part is I have a chimney right here that goes into the back of the wood stove. And all I have to do when I set my air conditioner in here is hook up the hot air vent tube to the chimney and it vents all the heat from the AC right out the chimney. Pretty sweet, so let's get her done. I do still have heat in the camper. I've got a Webasto diesel heater, which is right down there. It pumps out hot air, so I'm not worried about it. If it gets uh, if it starts getting cold, it should be fine. So I just took my toilet out from under the wood stove. I'm gonna roll it forward out of the way that way I get a place to work now all I have to do is access my three bolts that are holding the wood stove in and access them right down here so let's get those undone all right I get those three bolts holding the wood stove out so now we're going to remove this bar so I can pull the wood stove out all right Kimberly wood stove has been disconnected. All right, so as you can see, I've got my air conditioner right here. It's gonna fit right where the wood stove was. My tile's all busted, long story. So I'm gonna put the air conditioner in here 
lock it into place and hook everything up. Maybe not the best way to do it, but I did all that off-roading last year and this worked great. So I'm gonna tie it down the same way again. Just gonna put literally a kayak cam strap around the whole system. And there you have it. That's the system. The AC's in, baby. This is a 110 volt AC, but my little portable power stations will power it for a little bit, like my uh, Jackery 500 and my Blue Eddy 700 will power it for a little bit. Like I said though, I'm gonna power this with a Honda 1000 generator and it runs awesome with that. So super stoked. We are ready for the road trip. Oh yeah. Guess what everybody? We're gonna lift the camper up. This is the moment of truth. So we're gonna take that truck house, lift it up with the electric jacks, back the truck under it. We're gonna see how smooth it goes. Let's do it. So all I've got to do is open the door and power up the jacks with that one switch and it'll activate all the jacks for 15 minutes. And we'll use this control to lift them up. So we're going to lift it. That is so cool. So freaking easy. You guys seeing that? All right, I think this should be tall enough to back the truck under it. Let's find out. There you go. You guys saw how easy that was. Pretty nuts. Now we're just lowered all the way down. You can see all four of the jack feet are coming up at the same time. It does not get any easier than that. Pretty awesome. The motors are working away. And just out of curiosity, I want to see how many watts of power this is using for my house battery to power all four of these jacks. Let's go to my Battleborn battery Victron Bluetooth system. It's pretty sweet. There's my battery. Right now it's probably close to 100% charged. Yep, 99% charged. So right here, it's going to show the watts that are being drawn. So it's so right there. She's using a lot of power, 100, 130 watts to power all four of those jacks. So it does use a lot of power, but my system can handle it easy. Just like I was saying before, to take these jacks off, so easy. You unplug the power right there. Pull this pin out right here. Unhook the jack and it's off. So there it is guys. Camper's on. Good to go. All I need to do is tighten up my turnbuckles. And like I was saying, I just ordered some quick release turnbuckles. So I'll be able to come over here and just crank in a handle and they pop off instantly. So you saw how easy it was to load the camper, especially compared to the old manual jacks I had. Pretty rad, I'm super stoked on it. Uh, I was really sad to sell that Samurai, but now that was worth every penny. And also have some uh, new tires I'm throwing on this thing. I'm gonna do lockers on it. So we're gonna get this thing set up right. I would have loved to keep the Samurai, but I've got this vision for this truck. Um, just had to make it the ultimate everything rig. So that's what we're doing. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, smash the like button down there and uh, maybe subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more stuff like this. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace, y'all.